This is your Barbados Today Morning News Update for Monday, September the 24th. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. Topping the news at this hour, Director of the Coastal Zone Management Unit, Dr. Leo Brewster, is warning that Barbados is not ready to start operating its proposed offshore oil and gas industry in the near future. Speaking on Saturday night during a panel discussion entitled Fitting Fisheries and Other Coastal Activities into the Blue Economy at the Paines Bay Methodist Church, St. James, Dr. Brewster said Barbados currently lacks the qualified personnel to take up the required jobs. If oil exploration was to start even within the next three years, Barbados is not ready for it. Okay? You might be, legally, we might be ready for it in terms of what the the exploration uh, companies have to do and what's supposed to come back to the government and how it's supposed to roll out. But in terms of having the competencies within Barbados to be amalgamated into a burgeoning or, or newly developing um, offshore oil and gas industry, we're not ready. And if we're not ready, it means that others that are ready will be able to come in and take up jobs that could potentially be ours. A former parliamentary secretary in the Frandi Stewart administration has admitted that her government should have restructured the ailing economy during its term in office. The concession was made last night by first vice president of the Democratic Labour Party, Irene Sandiford Garner, while addressing a meeting of the St. Andrew branch of the DLP at the Allen School in Belle Plaine. A restructuring of the economy should have been done. Our administration depended on tourism. I worked in tourism for five years and I understand the vagaries of the industry. I understand and welcome what it would have, do, would have contributed to the country, but I also knew that it was a tenuous, a very tenuous foundation and we should have restructured. But in the good times of 14 years prior to us, the restructuring was not done. When we came in, we were busy trying to repay debt. Sandiford Garner, who heads the DLP's new communications team, also disclosed that the party has started a campaign to explain to Barbadians the implications of the current government's decisions going forward. So they're spending, they're not paying their debt. The IMF is supposed to be the savior of Barbados, but the IMF comes with conditions. People feel that you're going to get this concessionary money and it will be all sweetness and light. Again, we will be bringing people who are qualified in the areas to speak to our people and explain to them what these decisions mean. Because what you see is not what you will get. And General Secretary Geisen Mears announced that the party will be restructured as he elaborated on the plan to better communicate with Barbadians. We have embarked on the program of coming to all of the branches and outlining our policies and our programs so that you understand what has happened. We hear from you what you think has happened. We can tell you what we are rolling out and you will be able to join us and raise your voices with us when we have to speak on these issues. We recognize the importance of the branches. The branches have an integral part to play in the redevelopment of the party. We have some restructuring to do. You are going to be at the center of that restructuring. Meanwhile, Minister in the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Investment, Marsha Carroll, has called on the former Central Bank Governor, Dr. Delisle Worrell, to apologize to Barbadians for what she suggests was his assistance in bringing the country to the brink of economic destruction. Carroll told the annual general meeting of her St. Michael South Central Constituency Council in Tweedside last evening that the Dr. Worrell shall also say sorry for suggesting that 4,500 public servants should go home over a three-year period. President of the Small Business Association of Barbados, Dean Straker, says that sector will be the single most important plank in the recovery and the transformation of this country's economy. I say that because historical evidence proves that small business has led developed nations out of major recessions. Small business is responsible for 60% of jobs in the UK private sector and a similar percentage in the USA. Therefore, 
<clears throat> it is important that our Barbados government move without hesitation in identifying the specific entities and channels that will assist those Barbadians willing to take a chance on their ideas and concepts to start their own businesses. Straker was speaking at a church service to mark the start of Small Business Week at the First Baptist Church on Constitution Road yesterday. In sports now, Tiger Woods was moved to the brink of tears after capturing his first title since 2013 with a two-stroke triumph at the Tour Championship in Atlanta yesterday that proved he was far from washed up at the age of 42. Golf legend Tiger Woods is back on top. Woods won the Tour Championship in Atlanta on Sunday, ending his five-year victory drought. Woods had built a five-stroke lead halfway through the final round before struggling over his last few holes, but he came around finishing 11 under par, two strokes better than his nearest competitor. Since his last PGA Tour title in 2013, Woods has undergone four back surgeries. He was also arrested in 2017 after being found asleep behind the wheel of his car. A toxicology report found five drugs in his system but no alcohol. He was a title contender in several tournaments this season before Sunday's victory, which was his third tour championship win. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. Welcome back with news from the region now. Jamaica's Minister of Health, Christopher Tufton, is ratcheting up his healthy lifestyle campaign by controlling the messages seen by patients in public hospitals. More in this TVJ News report. I tell people everywhere I go, I don't want to see any more Indian soap opera on the TVs in the hospital. So, it's official. The only soaps you will see on hospital TVs are those about hygiene. But why is Dr. Christopher Tufton changing the channel on TVs in the waiting areas of public medical facilities? Well, with nearly 2 million visits to health centers and over 1.2 million visits to hospitals last year, the health minister says he is trying to convert the masses to a healthier lifestyle. We believe that we must create messages of encouragement to those who wait. So while they wait, they can inform themselves. And on the international scene, the university professor who has accused Brett Kavanaugh, President Donald Trump's Supreme Court nominee of sexual assault, will testify before a Senate panel on Thursday about her allegation. We pick up the story from Reuters Television. The woman accusing Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh of sexual assault will testify in a public hearing on Capitol Hill Thursday morning. That coming Sunday from both the Senate Judiciary Committee and attorneys for Christine Blasey Ford. Her legal team saying in a statement, quote, despite actual threats to her safety and her life, Dr. Ford believes it is important for senators to hear directly from her about the sexual assault committed against her. And that's news and the sports, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We are also on iZumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Now, you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.